Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So, in preparation for things we might have coming at some point next month, we've got a Kyosho motor. It's the first uh, motor I've had from the Kyosho series. And this is the 240S, I believe it is. It's the Le Mans motor, brushless. Um, we've got a few specs on this, so I believe... There's two different motors for this, and there's one geared more towards a two-wheel drive, one geared more towards a four-wheel drive. So I believe this one is the 15 and a half turn, geared more towards four-wheel drive. And it says RPM 7.4 volt, 18,870. So it's a 2550 kV motor. Uh, maximum current, 38 amps. Maximum power 320 watt, efficiency 90%, and apparently it weighs 179 grams. We've got a motor diameter of 35.8 mil, a length of 51.2. The shaft is 15 millimeters long, and it's a 3.175 diameter. Designed to run up to 2s, so 7.2 to 7.4 volt is its optimum, but quite a nice flashy box but does the motor match up to it so let's bring in for a close-up look and we'll unbox this thing take a look what you get if anything in the box so this is an extremely bling box they're not cheap motors um, but then again if you're going for something like this you know why you're buying it to keep him with the one at legendary series or something like that um, it does say on the back of it, 15.5 turn, I believe the other is 19.5, I'll just check, yeah, 19.5 is the other motor they do in this series, and that's geared more towards two-wheel drives. So, what do we get? We get a rather nice motor, so it does look like we've got adjustable timing, so plus and minus 10 degrees, I believe it's measured in. Nice solid uh, pins to solder to. We got a nice clean design bearing on the end of the uh, motor. Side exit for the sensor wire, so you're not going to have sensor wires stuck out at back. Extremely bling and extreme fingerprint magnet. But it will look really nice, no matter what you put this thing in. Does feel nice and solid. No vents like we get on the modern style end, uh, motors, but multiple positions to uh, screw it in with. We do get a tiny instruction manual. I'm not sure if it'll tell us anything really about the uh, motor, but we can have a look. So it does give you a full exploded view of it, so you can see how it all comes apart. And it does give you a breakdown of what all these parts are, although they're all numbered, but it doesn't tell you on that side, and it doesn't tell you on the other side either. So it does tell you which way to turn for higher or lower RPM. It does tell you it's for a port for the sensor wire for the cable. Uh, insert 12 first into motor before attaching and detaching six. So you basically get a sleeve that you can put in motor before you put in or remove the stator and everything. Probably to stop it damaging the uh, magnets. But let's have a look because we can get this out so it does come with a couple of screws to mount the motor with which is nice may or may not be needed and then you've got the little plastic guide in case you're needing to strip the motor down so you can get the actual rotor straight out the middle of it so yeah that's quite nice never had that with a motor yet but it would make putting it in and taking it out a lot easier it's not going to try and stick to magnets and you're not going to damage your coils it does tell you to remove the three screws when you're stripping it down but the exploded diagram it is quite nice to see obviously you take this plate off first and then you've got the screws on the outside it's going to be a while till i need this motor so let's see if we can actually do this so you're going to need a 1.5 mil hex. And if you remove those three screws, you can alter your timing. 
So if we take that plate off, you've then got the actual motor itself. We're then going to need a 2mm hex driver. slide it round. If you're very careful you can just slide it out the way. Or we can get them out so we know they're not getting stuck in anything. I think what we need to do is rotate the sensor board till it lines up with the little cutouts. should be able to get that ring to come off. And you can lift that out. So then it tells you to drop this in and that should, you should be able to line it up to go down the side of the rotor and then you should be able to slide the rotor out. Make sure you don't use, lose your little bushing off the end. Easier said than done, because you can't really grab it. <laughs> there we go. So, quite easy to strip down if you need to service it. Got a tiny little shim on the end, and then the green one. And you've got a marking on the end, little red mark, so you know which way around it goes. It's pretty easy to work it out because you've got a long shaft on one side and a short one on the other. But yeah, if you needed to service that bearing in the bottom, I'm not sure if you can see it, it's right down in there. But quite easy to actually get to it, to service. And then... <laughs> This is going to be easier said than done because it's going to want to pull out your fingers. But we should be able to use that sleeve to position the rotor back in the center. And then see the actual end of windings. And then you're going to have to line the three scrolls up with the cutouts. So you should be able to pop that back in. Then we need to get this little black spacer back out. And we want a timing ring. That's got to line up with those three holes. to line these up with the motor plate on the front or back whichever way you want to look at it and don't go crazy over tightening these so once you've got that in position you need to make sure your shims are on and then you're gonna to have to just wiggle that rotor around until we get this back into position and if you look on this we've got little tabs they have to line up with these little cutouts you're gonna to have to slowly lift the magnet up so you can actually get it into the middle of the bearing in here because you're then going to have to use that to get your sensor panel in place and then just turn it slightly so it's back over covering the little bolt and then we should be able to get the screws back in. And then if we just back these off slightly, you can then set your advance or retard timing. I'm just gonna put this back to standard. And you just wanna snug these down 
don't go crazy tight with them and then just check for free rotation of your motor and there you have it all back together so at least you know what that thing's for let's just service your motor and line your actual line your rotor up basically but it's a nice free feeling motor it looks extremely bling and it's going to be covered in a billion and one fingerprints now they are quite expensive they don't come with a sensor cable or I can't see one we got a little bag of do not eat but other than that that's pretty much all we get in there so no sensor cable but you do get the actual magnet guide to stop you scratching all your rotor up when you swap it and damaging anything it does give you a bit of a warning on the instructions that the motor can reach 70 degrees or if you gear it wrong it'll probably reach a bit more than that but this one is available from uh, Dave and the crew at RD Models at Chesterfield. I'll put a link in the description below. And as I say, they're not a cheap motor. They're a really nicely built motor. They're serviceable, which is nice to see. And they do look really nice. They are really well made. Um, and again, this one is the 15 and a half turn for your four wheel drive sort of classic series legendary or vintage series whatever you want to uh, call it but it's just a nice brushless motor so let's wrap this one up so there you have it the Le Mans 240s 15.5 turn Kyosho brushless motor um thought I'd do a strip down on this seems though you get the magnet guide and we've not seen that in any other motors that I've had in so yeah they're an expensive motor they're a really well built one and uh, hopefully later this year we can get some to put it in so I can tell you how it runs. So thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share to friends and family. And uh, catch you guys again in the next one.